Hi, my beautiful people. Welcome to Claudine A10 Against Colorism. While wow, you guys are enjoying these wonderful productions every day, I said, why not give you a treat from Jamaica? So today I have a treat for, for you. I hope you enjoy it. Hang on. Yeah. One of our uh, rough, what they used to term, the ghetto, we would call it inner city. Yeah. Uh, in, on the island, very rough. And, um, uh, Bob Marley pretty much lived there for a while when he came to the capital city, which is Kingston, because Bob Marley lived in the rural areas. And he actually began his, his um, career in Trenchtown, because there are a lot of music, reggae music luminaires who came out of Trenchtown. It's a very you know, a lot of musical talent of the Jamaican reggae genre. <clears throat> so, um, it has a special, but it is played by underdevelopment, underinvestment, and it's still a very tough neighborhood. There was a young girl a couple of years ago who was murdered in a home, and the murder has been nothing even though many people know who the perpetrator so what were um, you telling me about like how they um, murdered that girl and why they murdered her um you, know, you see where this becomes that could not drop because so it, okay. no, tell me the story about the girl huh? tell me why they murdered the girl yeah because they, they tried to um they try to 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 um what's the word in, in colloquial terms? They they were hitting they on her. They were hitting on her. <laughs> they were hitting. They were trying to hit on her, which is what the Americans use that phrase. And um, they were trying to mac. <laughs> <laughs> they were well. They were doing more than mac. I guess you're right. They were trying to hit on her. Okay. You know, and she wasn't interested. Uh -huh. she and was why was she? A student, a student um, girl mm -hmm. in the community. And um, they, they murdered her. And how did they murder her? They, sh they shot her right, um, shot her to our, in our house. Through her window? Yes, for our, our So they saw her and they shot her through the window. They shot her through the window. So, uh, wow. That is horrible. Horrible. And what is more horrific is that the perpetrator has never been brought to justice. Wow. It's say, and it is said that um, many people know who the perpetrators are. So then why is Dimongo saying that Jamaica is so um, safe? If, uh, if a young girl who is studying, minding her own business and trying to keep her dignity is so viciously murdered in that trench town. Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's something the, the people in the community need to reckon with. But it, it, it is not a good look. It's, um, you know, a lot, as I said, it's a, it's a particularly... How long ago did that happen? Because, you know, they might say, you know, you got to forget the past, you know. That, yeah, that, that happened um, a, a couple of years now. A couple. So while perhaps, you were here, yeah, perhaps um, perhaps five years now. Five years. That they yeah, were that. Yeah, that. I, I would say a couple of years, because you know. You know, the other day I saw Dimongo on. I don't know remember if it was Dimongo's channel or the guy who's touring, who's her tour guide, like Kino. They had. It might have been on Kino's channel. They had a little boy who was shot. Um, and you know they went to see the little boy, like eight years old little boy. He was shot, and now he was in a wheelchair bound or something. So, I, I, you think it's from the same violence, maybe? Oh, the one who, um, I, I think I saw. He, who you say he was? He was a teenage boy. No, a little tiny boy. He, the boy was like eight years old. Oh, it could children have been casualties down there of the, you know, 
the gang thing and the community. Um, so there is gang activity in Trenchtown? I don't know this particular um, child mm -hmm. is as a result. But that has been known to happen where yeah. quite a number of children have been killed in shootouts. Okay. So why is it, how could D-Mongo walk in the street with uh, so many shootouts in Trenchtown? I mean, I haven't seen any violence when well, she's there. I see her walking in the middle of the street. Even the guy, Kino, he has this restaurant, right? And I don't know if the people work in the restaurant or if there's this guy that's living in the restaurant. He would go in the mornings and they would all come out and stand right in front of the restaurant and they would have uh, like a meeting in the middle of the street where he would give them money, like they'd go on a missionary or something and give out these monies. Oh, what did that? It's a, a guy, some guy who, like, they call him a man of God. His name is Kino Life in Jamaica. He lives in Trenchtown. He seems to have a ministry in Trenchtown of building people houses. He's the one you said that uh, lived in England? Yeah, he's, he lived in England. His mother is still living in England. Listen, hey, as you said that, you know, I pull up something here from Demon. I was warned not to live in this Jamaican ghetto. <laughs> yeah, that's when she decided to move in Trench Town. Yeah. I can't. She, um, here. um, you know, I think what I would have to do, because now during watching, actually watching one of her videos to see what she covered. What did you watch of it, D? I know you watched them. I know you watched some of her videos. What have you watched so far? No, the only one we ever watched was the one in a Oh, that was a long time ago. You mean you haven't seen the videos when she went to Kenya and then she came back? Because when she came back from Kenya, she came right back to Trenchtown. And she has not... I only saw the headline that says she had go back at Jamaica and Trenchtown. And I said to myself, what this woman, she loved Johnny, you can know, she wasn't, 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 she
and you know, peer, you know, that kind of way, defiant with the ganja. Oh, that has to do with the attraction too? <laughs> yeah, of course, man. Oh, you know, by the way, woman, the guy... Woman love bad boy. Woman love bad boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> woman love bad boy. Well, the guy yes. that D, the guy, the dreadlock, the, the, the roster that D was praying for today, you yeah. know why she had to pray for him? He was huh? telling her that he wanted to stop smoking. <laughs> oh. Okay, interesting. <laughs> yes, the, the, um, one of the things I didn't even tell you, even with the, that's why Bob Marley was so enormously popular overseas. It was the white folks who who started to big up Bob Marley. But what what about what's the difference between the white folks and the Africans now? The African um, people, well, the, particularly the, the Kenyans. Yes, well, the the African people in general got. Um, but attracted to Bob Marley because at, there was a point in time where the Africa was just portrayed in the most negative narratives you could ever possibly imagine. Amen. Yes. In the Western world. Mm-hmm. And countering that, you had these Jamaican, particularly Rasta singers who was inspired by their motherland. Okay. They never forgot their motherland. And then the coming of the emperor, the emergence of a emperor, um, a black emperor on the world stage, who was Emperor Selassie of Ethiopia. This was in the 1930s. Now remember that um, just picture a world where Africa was under colonialism. All the African countries, with the exception of Ethiopia, that was never fully colonized. So the inspiration of these formerly enslaved people in Jamaica, who grew up here in that black no good, we weren't anything in the world, we didn't contribute anything to world history, we never have no greatness, we never have no no culture, no high culture, as they they talk about in academia, you know, about the high culture, low culture um, phenomenon. So the Rastans were, um, there was another figure of the 20th century um, by the name of Marcus Garvey. But who, I don't understand, wasn't Marcus Garvey supposed to be Barba- from Barbados? No, from Jamaica. But what, what, why is he such a big figure in Barbados? He's a big figure across the globe. You because was when I was going deep. to school, I, I went to school with a uh, now doctor. He was uh, a medical doctor. He was, but he was um, from Barbados. Um, and he was in pre-med at the time. And he was the first person I ever heard the word term, Marcus Garvey, you know, from... What? Well, I, what I should tell you is that in the, okay, one, hey, this is a good subject matter, and Aline, you know, um, who is enormously popular in Kenya, and the inspiration. What's her name? Elaine what? Elaine A-L-E-I-N-E, I think it is. She's, she's pretty popular. She has some nice good songs. And what does she have to do with Marcus Garvey in Jamaica? Yes, so Marcus Garvey, this is something that um, we can tie into this conversation. Marco is a very interesting thing you ask me, you know, because what you could do since this Jamaica, you could say across the diaspora, why is it? Because even this Nigerian blogger, him named Todd, got a Jamaica What is his Jamaica, name? Huh? Toy Art? It's like T O N Y A or something. I'm not even new. I'm not even funny new. I'm not going to pronounce. So when did and, he go um, to? But what you you can probably do a search. Um, because I saw the recommendation came up to you know, to me. Um, yes. So you know, Jamaica. You can uh, headline your your your. So um, 
So what happened? Garvey was enormously popular in the United States of America. He moved to the United States of America. He, Garvey, right, came and he 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 won he won over the the, the African Americans, and he that created a lot of jealousy here in the United States too, um, by people like W. E. D. Du Bois, um, Garvey, who began his 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 um, black consciousness um, affirmation of self because of the current that was going on throughout the, the world where black people reside. But well, that was so long ago. How does that tie in with the sudden uh, craze for Jamaica because, now? So I am telling, I'm showing you how that metamorphosis and amalgamation set in. So here was a group of Rasta people who were later known as Rastafarians was inspired by the crowning of the emperor, Hail Selassie, in Ethiopia. You ever heard of Hail Selassie? Uh, you know, you know, you're the historian, so... <laughs> yeah, well, Hail Selassie, no, was a, uh, was a very important figure in the 20th century. Um, as I... Because, no, let me... Keep your American majority are. We are African descendants. And so these Jamaican Africans now heard about the look to the east for the coming of a black king. They were referring to the, the now newly crowned emperor of Ethiopia, whose lineage is said, and the Ethiopian royal family goes back to the the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon. Mm -hmm. Yes, that the royal lineage in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever look and see how some beautiful, um, some beautiful uh, um, historic churches. You know, is one of the oldest Christian church um, in the in the world. Is in but Ethiopia. I have a question for you. Uh -huh. You guys, because you know, I'm not gonna think about churches right now uh yeah. my question for you is um i think it's very ironic that i guess you say that was the first african emperor that was being crowned at the time when everybody in jamaica was in the 20th up to century yes for that century. these rastafarians were oh the rastafarians high. yeah they were okay they because were the cultural because they the, developed this cultural instinct Mm -hmm. Because remember, it's like up, it's like up from slavery. I don't know if you know what my irony that I'm seeing is. Yes, go ahead. Uh, the irony is around that time because they have some very ancient videos that I I came across. Like they have like a whole series of them, of mm -hmm. college student debates. Okay, where you have students from Ethiopia are coming on to debate to claim that they are not blacks, that they are not Africans that they are whites, that um, the reason why I they saw turned, that, yes. You, saw you've that. seen them, yeah. So, yeah. And, and it was probably around that same era because the, the, these videos are so ancient, they're in black and white. I you know? I've seen them. Hmm? All right, let me explain that. You have to remember, put yourself in this time thing. It's kind of similar to now. Just like, oh yeah, black people said that. Oh, men are Africans. You have a lot of Jamaicans that tell you that. They could be black. Or that. Yeah, you could tell me you're white too. Huh? <laughs> you could tell yeah. me you're white. Hey, if you were Haitian, you probably would tell me you're white. I don't, well, I don't, it, it never crossed my mind. I never had that mindset. So and I that's what I would it. like to know why you wouldn't have the same kind right. of but, colorist but, but mindset I, as the I Haitians. I would dispute what. It wouldn't come from me, because this is how I've always been as a child. I never go with the grain, but trust me, I have I have known a lot of these Jamaicans who automatically they don't assume that I am pro black. You see? So they will Oh you told me about your sister. Yeah. Tell me about them white 
this with a mix with and all that kind of stuff. You'd never hear that kind of conversation from me. Yeah, but and why not? That because I am this, you know, I am I'm gonna I'm typically in that Jamaican mindset. Because the reality is genetically you should you should uh uphold both uh no, me not, all, me, all your genome. Yeah, well me not not me. To me, first of all, me not claim anybody where don't claim me. You understand? It's not like say me to have some white relative from England will come to come look for me and uh, Oh, help. so that means if they, what if they came to look for you? What would you do then? No, <laughs> you, could, you, you could understand a different association. Then I could say, well, mm -hmm. you know, these part of frame frame of my reference, just like oh, somebody know who is interracial, who their mom, their mother, their mother, a white woman. You know, as you said that, I like Obama. Huh? Obama. Right. Exactly. No, no, you can understand, you know, say, him do have a choice, he, he's him living a reality. Okay. But he chose but a black he, woman. He chose a black wife. Well, him, him did that strategically. But I don't know if it was strategic like, because that was, he, Obama yeah. married way before he even knew he was going to be uh, president. No, man, it is trajectory. You, you, you need to watch some of these documentary on Obama. Is the Kennedy them putting me? You know that Obama is related to George Bush. You knew that the mother was related to. Oh, I wow. No, listen to me. You know that George Bush. He used to be um, him, him and George Bush. They are cousins. Oh wow. And he used to play. He used to play with with um with George Bush as a child. Wow. And you see when you see when George Bush gave Michelle Obama the sweetie. I don't know if you were at the, I think it was Mandela funeral or one of them. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that's why I tell you, so these people, that's why I tell you, so, hey, no, no, remember saying, you know, you don't just come in at this at club, you know, this is a club, you know. You think you can just come over anywhere and come become president? Why do you think them bring somebody who is not connected to the African American experience to be president? Mm -hmm. I think they do it. This is how the game play, you know. Yeah. But, so, so anyway, so Jamaicans, uh, you say some Jamaicans would though, because I guess because the 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 white parent is there or whatnot. No, well, Jamaica frame of reference is like how most of the countries are, just like the African American. We would have been products of rape down the line and. Miscegenation and so on and so forth. Not like say how it was some intact family dynamics. You understand? It's just like you know, we couldn't go say you know, me have um, which relative me have in England? I walking around with a slave here. Yeah. So your basically your like your lineage was excluded from that. From it's that. a rape culture. Rape culture in the island. A rape culture in the island. That's where, that's where that comes so from. if it's such a rape culture, why is it that they, uh, well, I mean, I, we would hear otherwise in Dimongo's channel. We would hear like people in Dimongo's that's, channel that's say. That's why I said to, let me tell you, so I said to the Jamaicans about this abortion thing and why I firmly oppose abortion. Um, I said to them, I said, do you know when I'm telling them, oh, God, what about rape and, and this, that, that. I said, do you know how we originated <laughs> most, a lot of us on this island? This, we are products of rape. We are products of rape. Throughout the whole um, entire slave culture. <laughs> you know? But okay, so it's a rape culture. But again, you told me that your mindset is not the same as the average Jamaican. Yes, but, but right because yes, that is true. But then again, you live in a reality, and if I can come to that realization, then how it is that people still are going with this phony thing about oh me um 
we, we white, we have this, no, 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 I am not African. I am mixed, I am this, that, 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 that. where you from that? And that, that, that exists in Jamaica? Huh? That exists in Jamaica? It is. It is very prevalent, as I tell you. Mm-hmm. If it, yeah, I tell you, I mean, people believe that, you know, like, like I meet um, these people, especially those middle class people, and they automatically assume that I'm one of them, you understand? So that I would be, you know, that's my kind of pretension. But when they hear that and come with a the song, they're like a, like a bomb, you know? They're like a pause, it. Oh, this man, I talk about oh, this, that, that. You know, I am mixed. You know, I'm kind of weird. I don't, you know, I'm not into the mix argument. Yeah. But that's the Jamaica, because you see, again, you know, is how these societies are set up. So going back to where this movement of Rastas now saw a figure in which they could put their enormous, because it's a, okay, so it's a blending of, of the Bible, the biblical thing. Because remember, one of the things they did to us was Christianize us in the, in, in, um, in the Americas and before. Uh, so what are you guys church. mostly, Catholic or Protestants? If what? What's the predominant religion? The is... predominant is Protestant. Oh, and then know. interestingly, with the religion thing in Jamaica, religion also goes by the powers that are the new hegemon. So we used to be tied to the 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 um the British Church, Church of England. Because you know that Oh that's, that's why you guys are Protestants because that's right. England it was the first Protestant. Right. Oh, okay. So um we we have that but we still have the heavy um Catholic influence because as usual these guys these pirates they collaborate and split the difference and say hey we're not going to fight then later on when America become a power the leading power the Adventist movement become the biggest in Jamaica now oh Seventh Day Adventist really yes you know I admire you you know I admire that you know comes from that Sit out again, see what I'm telling you. Yeah, I admire yeah. his mother is like an ad, ad, you know, a great advocate of Seventh day Adventists. But there's a big problem with that. I don't know if you're aware. Me. It appears that the mother has never married or, or is not married to her living living husband. Oh, like a legal marriage. Yeah, it looks like there's like that's true oh, hypocrisy. They're, they're married traditionally, you know, you know, you know. I can't tell. No, she said it with her own mouth that she's going to get married for the last time while she has a living husband. Oh. <laughs> and and then the husband disappeared. <laughs> then the husband what? Disappeared, like you know. <laughs> Man, run. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, think about it. I Mara is like, well. I don't think that's her, his father. But look yeah. at the children. The children are in their late twenties, and you and know. He, <laughs> and you see, that's another breakdown of, of African families uh, that be, have become very westernized because you know that African um, people are usually very conservative. So in other words, if you're gonna go with the woman, it has to you have to go to our family. They they um they do the dowry and all of that is 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 very much alive still in Kenya and all these places. I hear it has to start to do with giving something that has four limbs. <laughs> well, if can if, if them expand it, I mean Cows and thing used to be, you know, an animal. But yeah. It, it them sounds them like that. Cows and, and goats. Yeah, it, 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 that is because those were the valuables. But is there anything of valuable to show your appreciation for getting the daughter, for getting their, for the, for the family to have raised the daughter? I think you know. I saw Wodemaya buying like 30 goats for Miss Trudy. <laughs> <laughs> 
And yet yeah, she's busy. She's busy now on the beach of my on Miami yeah, Beach, no, half no, naked. Bed on tight, and guys, thank you so much for one thousand five hundred subscribers. One thousand five hundred subscribers. God bless you. May God bless everything you do, everything you touch. May God protect you from every evil. May God protect you physically from harm, spiritually, economically, and uh, may God give you favor. For you have given me favor. God bless and enjoy. Orange as mangoes, yellow as bananas.